Uh, what we're going to talk about today is our two-component uh, two cementitious flexible waterproofing membrane. Woo. Okay, and it is called uh, Planet Seal 288. All right, and so I used to I used to demo 88 years ago. This is just a better version of that. Um, yeah, basically the difference between the 288 and the 88 is the 88 is a one component and it's a little bit more flexible. And where the 288 is a two component, good for positive side waterproofing. Okay, cool, cool. So how do I apply it? I roll it on, I spray it with a hopper, what do I gotta do? Uh, usually we apply it with a, uh, a trail okay. and a, a hopper gun. All right, all right. Okay. Hopper gun, I'm gonna spray it on and then knock it down or just leave it? Uh, you're going to spray it on and then smooth it out with a steel trail. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so what we're going to do first is, this is LeMay. Hey, LeMay, how He's are you? He's going to SSD the substrate. Okay. SSD, what the heck is that? Saturated surface dry. Bam. I knew that. I just wanted to make sure everyone else did. <laughs> and what he's basically doing is he's wetting the concrete substrate. And he's making sure that when he goes and uh, puts down his waterproof membrane, that all the moisture is not sucked out of the membrane. Right. The first, the first introduction to that surface of anything liquid should be cool, clean water. And that way the pores get blocked and don't suck it out of the mix and dry it out too fast or make it react too quickly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I got now you. Now, he, he's using a sponge right now to do it. Uh, you can use a spray. Uh, a spray bottle, you, you can use a garden hose. The most important thing is that you do not want to leave any freestanding puddles. Right. Okay. So once he has it fully saturated, then he's going to apply our 288. Okay. Now with the 288, you're going to use it on mostly balconies, um, reservoirs, tanks, retaining walls, but it's going to be on the positive side. Gotcha. So we have a ton of balconies in South Florida. You know that. Um, is it a wear surface? Yeah, you can use it as a, a final wear surface. Absolutely. Can I paint it? You can paint it with uh, one of our Last America products or our mop -a deck T or S. Okay. Can I stain it? Uh, you can stain it, yeah. But we recommend that you use an uh, acrylic water-based sealer like our mop -a finish wet look. Bam. Awesome. So you can see how he's uh, smoothing it out, making sure that he gets adequate coverage throughout. Usually the first coat is about 1 16th of an inch. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now he's using a steel trowel because of the conditions. But like I said before, we can also use a hopper gun on, on larger areas. All right. Talk to me about surface preparation. What type of surface profile do I need? Okay. You want to use concrete surface profile of a three. Okay. Um, and that is developed by International Concrete Repair Institute, and they recommend uh, a, a surface profile of a three for any type of uh, cementitious waterproofing membrane. All right, so my sidewalk out in front of my house, is that a three? No, that would be about a one. Okay, so that just gives you a point of reference. It right. needs to be a lot rougher than the sidewalk, and not the street, but not your sidewalk, something right, in between right. those two. And the one thing I, uh, I've always learned about and heard about surface prep, by, ha by adding texture to the surface, shortest distance between two points, anybody is? A straight, straight line. line. By adding that texture, I'm actually creating more surface to bond to. And um, it, it, I'm, I'm increasing my bond strengths because per square inch, I actually have more than a square inch because I have that texture. Right. It's like going up over top of a mountain range. It might be 10 miles from one side to the other. But to go over, up and over the mountain range, I'm going to add a lot more miles to get there. So now we put down a mesh. Okay, the reason why we put down the mesh uh, is, one, it reduces the flexibility of the product. And normally, before you put down any uh, membrane, you would repair any cracks during it right. that are in the substrate. Now, if there are any hairline cracks or something that you weren't able to get to or, or missed, uh, putting down a fiberglass mesh kind of prevents them from telegraphing through the final wear surface. Gotcha. And, um, uh, yeah. And I notice he's using a pool trowel. I, when I've done this in the past with a square edge trowel, if you just catch that corner, it winds up pulling the damn mesh up. It and pulls you everything up, everything and then you got to start all over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with the, the round edges on a pool trowel makes it a lot easier and a little bit more forgiving. Very good. So what's, what's up with that one there? So this is like a cooking show is what we're talking about then. So that one's already done. Yep, that one's all finished. That oh. one has the first coat on it with the mesh already embedded in. So what he's going to do on this one is you're going to do the second coat. Right. And he's going to 
pour it right on. The second coat you can usually do about one eighth of an inch, okay? Talk to me about coverages here. So the first coat, what kind of coverage am I getting out of that? About, about 75 square feet per gallon. Okay. And, and on that one, same thing? Yep, close to that. Okay. So wait, that one's white, this one was gray. So they come in two colors. Two colors, yep. Um, so you, you can either put the white one down first and then the gray or vice versa. All right. That's a good idea because now you can see if you go gray over gray or white over white, sometimes you might miss a spot or not see it. If I, if I switch the colors up, and now I can see that I'm, I've got complete coverage. And when it comes to waterproofing, you're either waterproofed or you're not. 99.9% .9 is a leak. And that's the one thing about waterproofing. It is absolute, no questions asked. The most important coat is the first coat when you're doing the waterproofing. Yeah, especially with that mesh in there because any cracks that develop in the concrete substrate that you're going over top of. And the one thing all cement is going to do, anybody, is crack. <laughs> right? Just look at the floor we're standing on right now. So any of those cracks will not transfer through because the mesh will prevent that from happening. If I have a crack in my waterproof system, I am not very waterproof. If you have a crack in your above ground swimming pool, how much water does it hold? Anybody? Zero. <laughs> right? It's all leaking out all over your backyard. So you want to make sure you use the mesh on the first one and then come over top of it and, and trowel on the second coat on top. And we said, we said it once before, but we'll say it again. One of the, you, you have to honor control joints yes. and expansion joints. Yes, yes. So, you all right. cannot go directly over them. That's a great point. So let's pretend we're waterproofing this, this right here, and I have a control joint through it. If I cut through that, I, I'm not waterproof. So what am I supposed to do with that? You would put a, uh, a sealant in between, like a polyurethane sealant. Bam and seal that off. I like that. So balconies, patios, pool decks. Pool, pool decks, reservoirs, tanks, retaining walls. Vertical, horizontal, and overhead? Both. Boom. Or all three. 